Hi, I'm John Darren with Kokia Valley Sword Group, and today we're continuing our series on things you can look for in your solo kata practice uh, to improve. Right? So, uh, big, in, in my opinion, one of the most important things that you can practice on your own is maintaining your posture. And we've talked a little bit about this, uh, but today we're going to focus on one specific uh, part of it. And that is the junction where your hips connect into the sort of trunk of your spine. Because this is an area that is both uh, incredibly important for building the kind of structural strength necessary to do a lot of the uh, work to overcome people that are stronger than you. Uh, but it's also an area that people have a real problem with. Um, because we're sort of naturally hinged there. Um, let's go ahead and uh, look at a quick example. Uh, unfortunately, right now, um, I'm in the middle of a bed building project, and so I've got lumber filling my uh, living room. So we're, we're just going to make this work as best we can. Right? Yeah. So... What commonly happens, people will start off, they'll, they'll get into their opening position of their kata, their tail will be tucked, their spine will be nice, weight distribution is good, they got their, their little bit of combative lean on, their feet are right, and they'll, I'll keep my arms out of the way so you can see my spine, and they'll go, and maybe the first two steps are good, and then it's time to do something, and they'll step sort of like this, right? They'll take that first long and pushing step. And what happens is their hips are canted at one angle, but in their attempt to maintain what they think is their posture, they keep their back sort of straight and perpendicular to the horizon, to the ground level. And this creates a sort of kink bump right here. Now, what their spine ideally should look like that hip should be relaxed and the spine in line with it. So when we move, we want to keep this sort of straight line between the top of our head and the tip of our tailbone so that when we take a large step, our hips release. We're not trying to hold them in place. We're not trying to, to keep each individual part perfect compared to the environment, we're trying to keep everything uh, perfect in relation to itself, right? So again, not good, right? You see the sharp break in the lower lumbar arc, right? Versus good, right? Straight, spine, but well, it's actually a C-shaped spine. This is the position that lets you really begin to leverage your connection with the ground against your opponent. When you break that connection at your belt line, what happens is as you're applying pressure at the top of your body, you can think of uh, the area of your spine between your shoulders and your hips as its own sort of discrete lever at this point. because all of the work you're doing is creating work and load up here, it levers against that weak point of your spine. So you end up needing to really engage a lot of back muscle to be able to push. Now, uh, the muscles in our back are some of the sort of best designed to do exactly this kind of work. So a lot of times people will be able to kind of muddle through and make do uh, even though they're doing it wrong, and at least until they come up and start wrestling a dude that knows how to work, right? In contrast, when we keep that spinal position true to itself, now the lever isn't from here to here, it's from here to the ground. And instead of being a sort of straight up and down, where there's no bracing, 
or angled all the way through to the floor. So as the pressure comes in here, it hits the floor. As I work here, boom, boom. When I'm resisted and pushed backwards, it goes into the ground. When I'm pushing and driving forward, it comes from the ground through my spine, right? I hope that makes sense. It's, it's pretty simple. Um, I think that if you're unsure if you've got this problem, right, and especially if you don't have a partner who is uh, good at wrestling with a blade and good at sort of pushing you around, what you can do is do your kata work by yourself without weapons and just take your uh, hand, your left hand, and put it on the small of your back, right? Get your position, feel it straight, and then start doing the kata and pay attention to what's going on in the small of your back. It's not a it's not a place that we usually direct our attention to, so it could be hard at first to kind of just mentally like, I am feeling the small of my back. So having the hand really helps. Um, beyond that, you can, if you uh, do have a partner or somebody willing to work with you, uh, push hands against them, right? So you have your hands out, they have their hands out, clasp, press, or whatever, doesn't really matter. And then both of you start walking your feet back, right? This will let you know pretty immediately what's going on with your spine. Because as the feet get further back, the tendency is going to be to want to really break that, that spinal arc right at your hips, just like we're trying to avoid. And you'll immediately feel the strain up the back. But you could learn to just bridge into it. And then it should basically uh, not cost you a lot in terms of endurance or physical strength because what you're holding yourself up with is mostly bone, right? The muscle, rather than carrying the load, is just holding the form. And so it's, it really has to do a lot less, which is the point, <laughs> the goal, at least. So uh, I hope that was helpful. Very short video today. Um, I'm sure I'll make up for it in the next ones. <laughs> As always, if you want to understand more about this work, you have to pick up a sword and go train.